Hey everyone. Uh, so in today's video, I'm just going to be talking about how much I made my first month freelancing and then comparing it to my second month just to give you a good idea of how much I grew those first two months. Um, so if you want to hear the gigs I used to do it and the breakdown of how much money I made with each of them, stick around. So yeah, when I first started freelancing, I really liked watching videos and reading stories, hearing how much people made um, when they started freelancing. It was just a good way for me to get a more concrete idea of how much I might make. And then it was also just kind of nice to hear about people making money and know that the journey wasn't impossible. When I started off, I started on um, Fiverr, which has its ups and downs, but it's a good place to get a portfolio behind you. Um, a lot of people might say that Fiverr is overcrowded with freelancers and that it's too hard to stand out and comes down to luck, but I don't really agree with that. I've done other videos already about creating gigs that stand out and pricing your gigs, uh, which I can link to below. But if you follow techniques like that, I really think that it comes down to more than just luck. You can stand out and start to gain momentum for yourself, but that's not really the point of today's video. Today's video is just telling you how I did. Uh, so when I started freelancing, I started with four gigs. Um, I recommend three gigs now, just so you can give each of them the time and effort they need to be really solid gigs that stand out before moving on to creating more. Um, but obviously I learned that over time, so I did four, which is fine. I don't think you're going to hurt if you start out with four. Um, so I had podcast editing, um, guitar part writing for songs, poetry writing, and then audiobook narration. When I started, I really thought podcast editing would be the meat and potatoes for me. The podcast market is really booming right now, and I thought I would get a lot of orders from people that needed their podcasts edited and mixed. Um, in reality, that's not what happened. Um, and I can talk about why, but let me just throw up a pie chart right now showing exactly what I made from each gig. So as you can see, my highest seller by far was audiobook narration. Um, I made $368 my first month narrating audiobooks. Uh, behind that was um, writing poetry, which earned $48. And then last was tips, which was $12, which is nice to get some tips here and there. Um, so this really took me by surprise. I didn't get a single podcast order my first month or my actually my second month. I did get one order, but yeah, I had no idea what I was doing with audiobook narration. This was kind of a pie in the sky gig for me. I went into it thinking, how hard can this be? You just read off a book and edit it. I can do that. I've mixed and mastered my own music for years. So I created a gig for that, thinking that if I ever did get a random order for it here and there, it would just be a nice bonus paycheck for me. Um, in reality, I kind of stumbled my way onto something that I wasn't expecting. First off, narrating audiobooks is way harder than I thought. Both the craft and the techniques are just so hard. Audible has a program called ACX for authors to get audiobooks made of their books. So there's a lot of small authors looking to get products made on there. And a lot of people go over to Fiverr to find narrators, even though you can do that on the ACX site. So I don't know the full story of this, but I guess what was happening is there was some sort of scam ring going on with audiobooks on Audible. I don't know the full story, but from what I kind of picked up here and there, Audible gives you a certain amount of free promotional copies of your audiobook when it's done to give out to sites for review and things like that. So I think they actually paid you every time somebody used one of these promotional copies. I don't know if they paid you the full price of the book or not, but Audible would give you some amount of money for these promotional copies. So what this ring of scammers was doing was creating audiobooks for as cheap as they humanly could. It didn't matter how good it was as long as it was good enough to get on the Audible website. And then from there, they would um, hand out their promotional copies to each other to redeem them. And then everyone would get paid for all of that and make a profit. I didn't know this at the time, um, but looking back, it really did help me. The books were absolutely horrible. They were all just 
badly translated books about the dumbest things. They would be about self-help or relaxation or Greek gods, and they were just very basic books. At the time, I thought these were just foreign authors that got their works translated by the wrong person, and I was trying to help them as much as I could. I would, you know, fix their language here and there when I was recording. I would a lot of times have to try and figure out what the sentences even meant to make it work. So I was putting in so much time and effort that I didn't need to put into this because at the end of the day, these scammers didn't care if I made their books better. They just wanted them done and up on the website. So that sucked. But the good thing is that it really did teach me what goes into audiobook narrating. Um, and there's so much to it. Even after you figure out how to meet the ACX standards, which is harder than I thought, it takes a lot to narrate an audiobook to be engaging to a listener. And it's something I'm still learning. It's something I still wouldn't say I'm great at. I charge what I'm worth, but I still have a lot to learn. So the point of this video isn't to say if you want to make money freelancing, go become an audiobook narrator, because I wouldn't do that, especially now that I think the scammers are gone. From what I've heard, they closed that loophole. What I am saying is that you never know where you're going to make your money. If you want to try and make money doing audiobook narration, go for it. it I do like it. It is fun. But at this point, you're going to have to do a lot of learning on your own. I would recommend finding a book that has short stories in it at your house and just narrating one of those and trying to meet ACX specifications just to see what it's like and then listen to it and see if you enjoy listening to it. After that, you can go online and watch videos from voiceover artists that give you techniques and tips to recording engaging voiceovers, but there's a lot that goes into it and you're probably going to have to take a journey before you're able to do this for money. Um, but what you can do is find things that you know and stand out with those. It might be tempting to go after these gigs with big paydays for every completed project, but not always. Podcast editing takes a lot less time to do and complete than recording an audiobook. Recording it and editing it and getting it up to specification takes hours and hours. These are huge projects. Podcast editing doesn't take as long, and you can get some good defaults going that you can apply to most of your projects, noise gates that usually work, EQs for female and male voices, and then you just have to tweak them for each project and um, make sure to cut out the bad parts. So that's something that doesn't take a long time, and even though it doesn't make as much, you can make it up through volume, especially through repeat clients. Anyone doing a podcast probably has a new episode weekly or bi-weekly, um, so they're going to be coming back to you with more orders and you can get a good constant flow of orders and start charging more and make a very nice amount of money off of podcast editing. So let's look at my second month of earnings now. Um, my second month, I earned $799, which is nearing on double what I made my first month. And again, by far my biggest seller was um, my audiobook narration. I made $780 narrating that month. Um, I made $8 editing one podcast and then $11.20 in tips. So that's not a lot for podcast editing, but I will say that things have definitely leveled out a lot more than they were at first, where it's not so lopsided like that. Um, and that's why I know that you can make money podcast editing. But really what I want to show is just how much my sales went up by my second month. I nearing on double the amount of money that month. And I think the majority of my clients my second month were returning customers. So it really does have a snowball effect when you start working with people. Your first month is going to be full of new clients. Your second month, you're going to have some returning clients from the first month and new clients. Your third month, you're going to have some returning clients from both of your first two months and more new clients. So it keeps snowballing and getting bigger and you have more work coming in that you don't have to go out and try and compete for. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it keeps going up from there. It's gone up from there for me uh, to where I can make a decent living off of this now. Um, 
$799 wasn't enough to live off of. It was about half of what I needed, bare minimum, just to cover my utilities and food. But it was a good start for my second month. So it might not take as long as you think to go full time with this and make this your career. Just let it start snowballing for you and see where you're at. Maybe it'll take you six months. Maybe it'll take you a year. But it's definitely doable and you can stand out from the crowd and get some good business coming in. Just find things that you're good at and start with those. And then if you want to add in new things that you're interested in, make sure you know what you're doing and learn a little bit. If you want to get into audiobook narration, learn about it. Uh, it's fun to do, like I said. Um, and you never know where your money is going to come from. But it's definitely possible to make a living off of this. And hopefully you can see that even in your first two months, you can make a substantial amount of money. So if you liked this and you want to see more videos about how you can stand out with your gigs or anything to do with freelancing, stick around the channel. If you have any topics that you want to hear me talk about or any techniques that you want to know, let me know in the comments and I'll do what I can to make a video about those. Um, and please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of good content on here already and I make two videos a week, so there's plenty more to come. Um, thanks for watching and I hope I see you again.